We're winding down our summer of 50 Pittsburgh Tech Stories with Comcast. I can't believe it. It's like September now, and we're, we're on the home stretch to our 50 stories. And one story that we had to tell was a story of Ethical Intruder and David Kane, because these guys are doing some really great work out there when it comes to all things cybersecurity. They are our go-to people at the Pittsburgh Technology Council on so many levels, like crazy things coming up in the middle of the day. We give Dave a call and he tells us not to worry or to worry and tells us how to guard against it. To him being part of some of our biggest events, providing support that way. And it's when these folks were over the years have gotten to know Dave and what he's doing, I think is such transformative work, especially through the whole COVID thing as well too, because there's been extra attacks going on out there. And once again, Dave's been our go-to guy and providing us thought leadership around this, even things like using Zoom and different different uh, meeting platforms and how to be safe on them. So Dave, welcome to the show today. So glad to have you here. Plus you got some really great news we're gonna talk about later that I'm really excited about. You guys working on a cool project over yeah. at Carnegie Mellon, which I think is completely rad and I can't wait to get to that. So welcome to the show, Dave. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks, Jonathan, for having me. Always great to... Always good to talk to you. So. Likewise, man. And so your company is so cool. I say if, if, if I actually had any sort of computer skills, which I do not, but if I had just uh, some, I would want to do what you do because you get paid to hack. And I think that's just so neat, man. It is so cool. Tell us about Ethical Intruder and kind of the key services that you guys put together these days. Yeah, sure. So um, high level, I mean, we are a services only company. We don't sell any products. We're just trying to make sure the hackers can't get in. Um, the three areas that we focus on are is penetration testing, as you mentioned, being an ethical hacker with permission, getting paid to um, you know, break into systems. Um, and then we build cybersecurity and compliance roadmaps uh, to meet business obligations that people have to grow and maintain their business. And we focus, as, as you know well, on phishing and social engineering to get people to you know, change their behaviors and not have a user be the reason why they're going to, you know, be susceptible to the company being attacked. So those are sort of our, our core services. If there's one thing I've learned over the many, many years, the tech council and interviewing folks in your industry, and it, it comes down to in this day and age, if you're running a business, even if you have to have a cybersecurity plan. You have to have a roadmap. You can't wing it anymore. You can't say, I'll do it next year. It's like, if you don't have some sort, and, and I think you need a professional for this. I don't think you can just go online and take a couple tips and tricks. I think you need to be partnering with a company like, like Ethical in order to make sure you're safe in lockdown. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so no, those are good points. I mean, first of all, going online and trying to figure this out yourself is definitely better than, than not doing anything. But you know, we run into a lot of companies that just, they don't have a chief information security officer or a dedicated cybersecurity team. And that's where it's really helpful. Or if you have a team to complement it and, and bring somebody in. Um, and, you know, it's interesting. There's always this sort of mantra that compliance and security has a cost, but there's also a cost to not doing it. And it yeah. just seems like, <laughs> it you know, now that, a lot bigger too. <laughs> so now that COVID's hit, you know, it just seems like companies are starting to, you know, um, realize a little bit more that they have to focus on the actual business risk and that the unexpected, as we've seen, can happen. So going out and, and helping to build a framework or a, or a program around security is, is really you know, key for companies to survive. Absolutely. You know, speaking of COVID, obviously attacks are up and they're being more clever and they're right. using that as a cover in order to get you to click on stuff and, and, and everything like that. Tell us, what are some of the new things that are happening uh, since COVID has started Six months ago, which right, is I know. when I say that, I'm like, what? Like, oh man, <laughs> crazy. So, so a couple things have happened. First of all, one of the major changes for organizations, for those who do have a security program um, that they need to now look at, and for those that don't, it becomes really important is that the corporate boundary has changed, right? So, it used to be the corporate boundary was protecting your users while they were at work inside your four walls. And Sometimes you would have a, a telecommuter or a work from home policy that, you know, but now everybody's working from home, which means your boundary for your operation really has expanded and trying to figure out how to move security in that direction has been a huge uh, opportunity and concern for businesses and also has been a huge opportunity for the hackers, right? Because they now realize um, you know, people are, I think, you know, a couple months ago or a month ago or however long ago as we were talking about the, you know, the Twitter hack, right? And, right. you know, that ended up possibly, you know, being insider threat, somebody getting to somebody at home, manipulating sort of what they knew. And then the other big thing that we're seeing in COVID 
of course, is a huge rise in social engineering, phishing, COVID-related attacks. And, and, the, and the key for that is that, um, you know, this is, this is behavior, right? Everybody thinks that phishing and social engineering is either, you know, have HR do it because it's about training or have IT do it because they're breaking into our systems. But the bottom line is this is human behavior. And, you know, right now everybody is, hey, you know, a new heat map came out showing all of the cases in Allegheny County or Look here. You know, <laughs> click to see which school district has, you know, and people are just not thinking about it and clicking and entering credentials. And so I, I think between the boundaries changes and then you know, everybody's sort of behavior is changing dramatically. That's that's what, you know, we're seeing hackers and malicious intruders sort of focus on. Absolutely. And it's, like I said, it's under the cover of this where you, people are like their guards kind of down in some ways because they just want information and all of a sudden it's like, no, keep your guard up. Don't click on right. stuff. So I mean, one of the coolest things you did was a few months ago, you put together this really nice piece that kind of overviewed all of the, the virtual meeting platforms and kind of went over the pluses and the minuses. And, and we've all become so sophisticated on using our platforms now, which has been kind right. of cool. Has there been any changes in security? Because I know, I know originally security was like a big issue, and it was mostly because people weren't setting their their uh, their, their, their platforms up properly. They they weren't putting all the, the lockdowns on. What, what's what's changed, or has anything changed at all with some of these yeah. things like Zoom and, okay. and Teams and so forth? Yeah, that's a great question. So you're right. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. I mean, at the beginning, a lot of this had to do with. People were using Zoom. Zoom is great. Zoom's coming to Pittsburgh. That's awesome. Um, and, and I think people just didn't understand the functionality and the controls within this great tool that was free for people to use for all of us that are sitting at home right now um, that didn't have, have a platform. And so there were some holes, right? I mean, they went from smaller-ish company to everybody using them overnight. So yeah, there were some security issues. But a lot of it was, and that's what our guidance was, was just understanding what's already in the tool that you can use, like having the waiting room and, and, and various components. Um, but, you know, early on, as you mentioned, when we put this out, our focus really was when COVID hit, we're not going to try to sell anything, right? I mean, we, we just want to try to help people out. So we were nice. doing, you know, guidances. We were doing free trainings, free fishing. We were even doing free penetration testing for people sort of on the front lines. and that really helped us to sort of sort of see what people were going through, helping them to work securely from home and to get a good feel on sort of where we need to shift and move forward, um, you know, from all of that. But we're really glad we were able to, you know, supply all that support and sort of help people out over those first initial couple of months. I thought it was pretty awesome because in the beginning we were all kind of wondering and just having a guide from someone that knows this stuff inside and out help us make decisions set things up properly so we thank you for doing that dave for sure Absolutely. for sure so let's get to even more fun stuff this is kind of like some breaking news here at ethical intruder you guys are going to be hanging out with carnegie mellon give us right. some details on what this is all about it seems like you're up against some pretty tough competition to have students pick you as a project and right. you guys want out so what's going on yeah, so um, one of the master's programs, the INI program at CMU, uh, mm -hmm. they have a master's program and, and all the schools, I mean, we, you know, we have students from all of the schools in the region that we've brought on and, and we sort of work with everybody. But these kids and these, these students, I should say, these young adults in this INI master's program are- I call them kids. Yeah, they are kids. They're, they're like, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're, they're like rocket scientists. I mean, these they kids are, are at the top of the top and they're really good. And so- uh, we were had been requested by CMU to be take part in their uh, a sponsorship for their practicum program, which is basically a semester long program where students can go on your project. And we were like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, we've worked with somebody out of that program who's just 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 phenomenal. And you know, I had heard that you know some of the people that have been in the program in the past are like you know Intel and Microsoft and Google, and I just sort of figured. Those were some of the companies that sort of right. participate. Yeah. And it is a competition, right? So there's a pitch night. And basically what you do is you, uh, a lot, it's, it's like a science fair. Like you, you're all on Zoom at the same time. <laughs> and there's like 10 companies all pitching to the same students to be on, on their program. And so I knew there were, there were those cool uh, different companies. But what I didn't realize until we got the invitation for pitch night was that we were competing against Procter & Gamble, T-Mobile, 
the NSA, NASA, the Department of Energy. I mean, these are all yeah, those are big names, man. <laughs> cool places to sort of work. So, so I'm sitting here thinking, oh, I get you know, we're gonna pitch. I'm I'm excited to hear what the NSA and NASA what their project is, and then on the other hand, you know, we have to try to promote what we're doing to get these kids excited. And um, so we go through pitch night, and then there's a break for about five minutes um, before everybody sort of goes to all these breakouts and somebody texted me and they were like, hey, there's people in our breakout room already. So I was like, cool, Okay. Um, we'll hop into our breakout, we'll talk to these students, maybe they have a few questions before they hop over and talk to the NSA or, or NASA. <laughs> NASA. <laughs> and, they, they, and they stuck around, right, the, the whole okay. time. So what, <laughs> like, what, 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 what we're doing is, our, what our project is, is we're, we're using machine learning um, to help automate uh, the penetration testing process and provide additional insight for what we're doing. And uh, basically what we're doing, and there's a few models out that are similar to this, we are taking vulnerability analysis, we are feeding it into the machine learning, okay. we will be feeding it into the machine learning, um, and then mapping it to certain frameworks, such as the MITRE ATT&CK framework, other frameworks that are out there. And then we're, we're, this is a little bit different than some other projects, is that we're trying to provide machine learning output for human learning. So machine oh, learning for man. human learning. That's and cool. so now our, our uh, yeah, it's cool, right? I mean, it sounds really cool. Um, <laughs> and so it allows us to, um, you know, reduce false positives, reduce the risk of just automating attacks um, and help out with vulnerability management. And there's just a couple of sort of new cool things that we're doing that we don't think is, is out there in the industry. So that's our project. And again, some of these kids. I love are like, it. So yeah, when does this kick off? You know, uh, this week. So it's, Oh my it's, goodness. Uh, <laughs> that's, yeah. Yeah. I thought you could say like spring or something like that, but no, it's like this semester. I guess. Yeah, no, it's like, it's like right now. Right. So um, I think we're having our kickoff meeting Friday. It goes to the semester. Okay. Um, we have uh, four students in it. And for, again, from the I and I program, but these mm -hmm. are like already, they, they are literally like seasoned professionals when they come out of the INI program. Um, and our faculty advisor is a new, uh, he's new to the INI program in CMU, but um, he's, a, he's a designated subject matter expert for the Department of Defense wow. for cyber automation, right? All so, right, man. Good Lord. Um, so we're super, super excited about sort of adding this to, you know, how we can help post COVID or, you know, during COVID you know, to really increase the efficiency of, of what we're doing. So super excited about it. Oh, I'm, I'm just double pumped for you guys. And that's why I was so excited to tell you a little bit of your story today, because the ethical intruder and it's one of these companies that really makes Pittsburgh special. You know, the work that you guys do, the way you give back to the community, working on kick butt projects like this with Carnegie Mellon, so much to be proud of. Uh, Dave, thanks for hanging out with us today and being part of our Comcast summer of 50 Pittsburgh tech stories. We only got a few more of these to tell. I don't know what I'm going to do after that. <laughs> All right. All right. No, it's great being here. Always, always good to talk to you, Jonathan. Appreciate the time.